Hello and welcome to The Broken Sword. Today we are looking at the character of Aeol, the Dark Elf. Aeol was one of the kin of King Eluthingal, who was one of the two kings of the Teleri group of elves. The Teleri were known to be the third group of the elves who would take the journey, entering Beleriand in the year 1128 of the Years of the Trees. This group took their home to be in Beleriand, and they would have descendants that became known as the Sindar, which also means grey people, or grey elves more specifically and they were also known by the names Elves of the Twilight and Middle Elves as well. Aeol would be one of these Cinder. He would start to take his own path before too long though, and the final moment that caused him to set off was the raising of the Girdle of Melian. And this was an enchantment that the Queen and Thingol's wife, Melian, would raise to prevent entry into their land of Doriath in central Beleriand without the King's will and consent. So here, Aeol set out to live in the forest of Nan Elmoth. But now the trees of Nan Elmoth were the tallest and darkest in all Beleriand, and there the sun never came, and there Aeol dwelt, who was named the Dark Elf. Of old he was of the kin of Thingol, but he was restless and ill at ease in Doriath, and when the girdle of Melian was set about the forest of Region, where he dwelt, he fled thence to Nan Elmoth. There he lived in deep shadow, loving the night and the twilight under the stars. He shunned the Noldor, holding them to blame for the return of Morgoth, to trouble the quiet of Beleriand. But for the dwarves he had more liking than any other of the elven folk of old. From him the dwarves learned much of what passed in the lands of the Eldar. That passage has a good few moments that show us just how unique he was to his race. He enjoyed the world before the sun, preferred the night, as well as striking up great friendships with the Dwarves, mainly the Dwarves of Nogrod and Belagost in the Blue Mountains, for he had a great interest in learning the skills that they would share. He was certainly a different breed compared to the majority of his kin. He came to learn the great skills in the ways of metalwork from them, and became renowned as a skilled craftsman, being a master at the smithing of swords. This is where one of the most famous creations would come from. He created two swords that became known as Anglakel and Angirel. These were made from the iron of a meteorite, and they possessed a glowing black blade that was capable of slicing through iron. Of these two, Anglakel would be given, albeit reluctantly, to King Thingol as a payment for being let to live in Nan Elmoth. And this sword would be the one that Belek Strongbow would eventually take when he went to search for his friend Turin Taramba. But all of that is a story for another day. As for the other sword, Angiral, this one was kept by Aeol, although it would eventually be stolen by his son, Maeglin. It is rumoured he took it when he fled to Gondolin, but what truly happened to it is one of the mysteries that has been left unanswered, but we will get to that in a bit. It was not just weapons he could make so uniquely though, for he invented his own type of metal called Galvorn. This would be the material he made his armour from, and this armour would also be black that shined like jet. It was said to be as hard as steel, but flexible and adaptable, proving to be resistant to all blades and darts that struck it. Sadly though, after Aeol's later death, Galvorn was never mentioned again, so it can only be assumed that the secrets of this material died with him. But anyway, we're not there yet. Back to the elf himself. Aeol would come to marry the sister of the King of Gondolin, Turgon. Her name was Arathel, and one day, around the year 300 of the First Age, she had been separated from her travelling companions from Gondolin, and she ended up near the border of Nan Elmoth. And as soon as Aeol set his eyes upon her, he desired her. She succumbed to Aeol's enchantments that drew her into the depths of the forest all the way to his home. She would stay willingly in the end, and they would eventually marry, with them having a son in the year 320 of the First Age. He would be named Maeglin. They all lived here for a time, but eventually Arathel would become very homesick, for Aeol would not let her visit any of her kin. To help prevent this, she told their son many stories of Gondolin and the Noldor when Aeol was not around, but this had the opposite effect. It only added to her longing to return home, 
as well as planting ideas in Maeglin's head of great places they were not allowed to visit. And the possibility that he could be next in line to the throne of Gondolin as his uncle, King Turgon, had no other heir. It was now the year 400 of the First Age, and Aeol was visiting the Blue Mountains. At this time, Maeglin proposed the idea to his mother to leave and return to Gondolin, to which she replied with great enthusiasm. And so, they left and abandoned Aeol, with Maeglin also taking Angiral. When Aeol returned, he realised that they had left days before, and immediately made to chase them down, embarrassed that they had managed to get away so easily. During his hunt, he was captured by the Noldorian prince, Carufin, who was the fifth of the seven sons of Feanor. Carufin had the desire to kill Aeol, for he knew Aeol's hatred of the Noldor as he considered them usurpers. However, because of the laws of the Aldar, he was prevented from doing so, so instead he gave him counsel, and this was to return back to where he came from, for all that Carufin could see if Aeol continued was his death. But of course, Aeol ignored this and continued his hunt, and in time he would catch up with his wife and son at the ford of Brithiac of the river Sirion on the northern border of Brethil. Aeol would not confront them though, for he realised Arathal was making her way back to Gondolin, so instead he followed them. By following them he learned of the secret way to the secret city, the knowledge that so many would desire. However, he would be spotted, captured, and then taken before the king. Turgon would not initially treat him badly, as he saw Aeol as a kinsman, but the law of the city of Gondolin meant that anyone who found out the secret passage to their city was not allowed to then leave. Aeol would not agree to this, as he believed the Noldor had no right to seize realms or to set bound, and that he believed to belong to the Teleri. Aeol was adamant it was the fault of the Noldor that the war had been brought to his once peaceful land. Turgon would be bemused by this though, as he pointed out Aeol's own home in Nanelmoth was defended by Noldorian swords, not Teleri, and without the Noldor, his home would be just another piece of land decimated by the evil of Angband. The two could not come to an agreement, so this meant only one thing. Aeol would have to make a choice. He could either accept the law and live in Gondolin peacefully, or he could die. Turgon would even offer this same choice to Maeglin too. Maeglin of course would choose to live peacefully, however Aeol would not take this so lightly. And Turgon sat in his high seat holding his staff of doom, and in a stern voice spoke, I will not debate with you, Dark Elf. By the swords of the Noldor alone are your sunless woods defended. Your freedom to wander their wild you owe to my kin and but for them long since you would have laboured in thraldom in the pits of Angband. And here I am king, and whether you will it or will it not, my doom is law. This choice is only given to you, to abide here, or to die here, and also for your son. Then Aeol looked into the eyes of King Turgon, and he was not daunted, but stood long without word or movement while a still silence fell upon the hall. And Erethal was afraid, knowing that he was perilous. Suddenly, swift as serpent, he seized a javelin that he held hid beneath his cloak and cast it at Maeglin, crying, The second choice I take, and for my son also, you shall not hold what is mine. But Erethal sprang before the dart, and it smote her in the shoulder. And Aeol was overborne by many, and set in bonds, and led away while others tended to Erethal. But Maeglin, looking upon his father, was silent. So, Aeol was willing to take his own son down to prevent him from being peaceful in Gondolin. But Arathel saved her son's life by sacrificing her own, for it was discovered too late that the point of the javelin throne had been poisoned, meaning Arathel stood no chance of recovering from this wound. Therefore, when Aeol came before Turgon for his judgement, no mercy would be found. Aeol would be sentenced to be thrown over the cliff of Caragdur, a black precipice of rock on the north side of Gondolin, but before he would fall, he shouted at Maeglin, Here may you yet die the same death as I, cursing his son. Thus, Aeol the Dark Elf met his end fate. With the completion of his life, we can see just why Aeol was known as the Dark Elf, 
although the term Dark Elf is often used about any elf who had not seen the light of a man. However, there is also the term of Moriquendi, which is the name given to the Elves of Darkness, who were all the elves who did not behold the light of the two trees of Valinor as well. Ael was at least in some parts different. This description of Ael came more from his unique dark toned skin and hair, and that was different from the usual blonde and silver hair of his kin. It also came from his skill of forging weapons and armour of a jet black appearance with an extremely high level of skill. These weapons are filled with the malice of Ael, as well as being apparently sentient. Along with this, his actions fitted his name too. After all, he lured his future wife to his home where she could not escape forcing her to never see her kin again, as well as being willing to take his own son's life when they chose to leave him. All these things add up to the tragic character of the being known as Aeol the Dark Elf. So I hope you all enjoyed this video for today, but now it is time for my question for you all, which is, how do you feel about the idea of Dark Elves? Do you think all elves should be good and pure, or is having more morally grey members of the race a good thing too, even if they are elves? Let me know all of your thoughts and opinions on this topic in the comment section below. And now firstly just to quickly mention our other channels that will all be linked below if you'd like to check them out, and also to shout out our patrons. Firstly we have our Divine Power tier members of Kevin, Abram and Matt, you are all awesome, and a big thanks to our Fire Demon tier members of Nishith, Themvisteel and Gregory, and as well I cannot forget the Wizard Staff tier members of John, Andrew, Bill, Evil Comedian, Jennifer and Finmod Felagund as well. Every single one of you is a true legend of the Bro Hero. Finally, if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today and you have enjoyed what you've seen, then please do all the great stuff, hit the like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon too so that you can be notified of all future uploads, and why not give the video a share with your friends as well. All of these things massively help out the channel if you wish to do so. And so, thank you once again if you have managed to reach the very end of this video with me today, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.